Well, life as we know it could soon be changing. A new audio book is taking a fascinating look at how mRNA vaccines are transforming the scientific landscape by sparking a biotechnology revolution in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. In the new audio book entitled Higher Animals, Vaccines, Synthetic Biology, and the Future of Life, Author Michael Spector reveals that after decades of incremental progress, scientists are rapidly learning how to create and alter cells by writing and rewriting DNA. In other words, they're learning how to program life. I'm already scared. Um, so uh, Michael Spector joins us now. He's an adjunct professor of bioengineering at Stanford University and a staff writer at The New Yorker. So how close are we to this and what will be possible? One correction, I'm at MIT now. I know that people oh, at both those great. universities will be mad at me if that isn't correct. MIT. Well, we've made some of these breakthroughs. 14 billion mRNA COVID vaccines have been administered to people, and those vaccines were basically downloaded. You know, the way that happened was the information was put on the Internet. It was downloaded by tons of labs. Those people then took that DNA, ordered it, arranged it, infected a cell, and recreated the virus in labs. And that was... That made it possible for companies like Moderna to make a vaccine in less than a year, though, in fact, Moderna had the basic vaccine in five days. And it usually takes years and years. The fastest vaccine ever had been four years. So in the first year of that vaccine's presence alone, 20 million lives were saved just because we had it. Wow. If, we, if we went through the old timeline, we'd be getting a vaccine maybe about now for the first time. That's amazing. So this is, uh, sounds like really good news. Are there dangers that come with it? Yeah, I mean, what we're basically talking about is biology is becoming digital information. It's like bits and bytes that move through your computer that let you rewrite things on your programs. Instead of bits and bytes, the letters for biology are the letters of DNA. And the better we get at rearranging those letters, altering those letters, augmenting those letters and cells, the more power we have over the development of all kinds of life. And that is wonderful news if you want to develop an influenza vaccine or think about innovative cancer treatments or even all sorts of industrial applications that won't pollute the world. But it also means that it's getting easier to make these things. And not every single person on Earth is benign. And we need to start thinking a little bit more seriously about what we're going to do with the sequences of viruses. What we do now is we publish them. We publish them instantly and everywhere. And any viral sequence is accessible to anyone with an Internet connection. That didn't used to be a terrible problem, but we're moving from sort of the equivalent of the mainframe computer era where a computer took up two rooms and now a computer on my phone is more powerful than that computer. We're making wow. that transition in biology. That's great. But if you don't want your kids coming home from school one day saying, hey, I just designed a, a, a virus that no vaccine can stop, we need to do some things to prevent that from happening. Michael, good morning. It's Willie. Full disclosure, I think I've known you since I was seven years old. Maybe you can correct me on the number, but uh, it's it's good to see you, Michael and my dad, old buddies. Yeah, I think it was around, it was around seven. You were taller than me then, too. So just... <laughs> I've seen you in your natural state at some of those parties, but we'll put that to the side anyway. Um, professor, <laughs> let's 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 go there. So let's let's talk about some of the amazing things that the potential of all this. You talk about uh, food and water shortages in places that desperately need them. That could be revolutionized by this kind of technology. Just for people watching, practically, how does that work? How does this mRNA help with some something like a scarcity of food or scarcity of water? Well, first of all, I think mRNA is, it's like a tool bit in the toolbox. It's a very powerful one, but there are similar ones that will allow you to rewrite and edit DNA. You've heard of CRISPR. When it comes to growing the food that most of the world needs, we don't have enough nitrogen, and that requires fertilizer. Fertilizer is really 
polluting. It's destroyed millions of lakes, rivers, streams, it poisons people. We need it in order to grow food, but agriculture actually makes its own fertilizer. And if we never cut any plants down, everything would just fertilize itself. So there are companies, and I write about one in this book, um, that are kind of trying to grow fertilizer, to put it inside plants so that it would be natural, it wouldn't be polluting, it wouldn't be made in giant chemical factories. And if you could do that cheaply, that would be a really revolutionary way to help feed literally billions of people who are struggling for food. Um, there the are all sorts book. of... Go ahead. So, so, so sorry to cut you off. We are hitting upon the top of the hour. Um, you can get oh. much more information on the audiobook. Um, it's entitled Higher Animals, Vaccines, Synthetic Biology, and the Future of Life with visiting scholar at MIT uh, and Willie Geist's friend. We want to hear about those parties as well. <laughs> Michael Spector, thank you very much for being on this morning. And